Holy moly, what's going on with my buggy? Just floating off. It looks like a big giant kicked it. Or maybe there was an explosion. Oh, sorry. Um, welcome to another episode of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. This is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. We are in my deluxe hangar. And this is right after hangar patch 12. And the release of Arena Commander. It's actually a little bit over a day after that. I recorded this footage last night, tried to do a voiceover during the shooting of it, and it came out horrible. So we're going to be doing some post, uh, a post version of audio for this and try to describe what's going on. So in front of us you see my, my hangar and all these wonderful ships. And of course most of you have already been in Arena Commander, so you know if you own any of the ships, you get a training version of it. Any of the ships that are included, which are the Aurora MR, the 300i, and the F7C. What I'm doing now is entering in the expression that you have to enter into the console to get the X55 to work. There's an XML file that they created for the key map and you just put it anywhere on your computer and then point to it with this expression. My thinking is at some point we're going to have a way to make our own key maps, but for the time being, this is what they're giving for us, you know, to us. I just can't, I can't tell you how beautiful I think that this looks right now. This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, hangar now that the PBR is done it has a look of Rebel Alliance meets Buck Rogers meets Flash Gordon it's a mix of new and old all in one place and if you want to know what I mean by old if you have a freelancer go look at it it's got that bright aluminum look to it like a 1950s style RV I think when I walked in here last night, I, I was a little bit in awe and taken back by the fact that my buggy was floating across the uh, floating across the hangar floor there. But I shouldn't have been so excited about that because prior to this, I was streaming on Twitch uh, the night before last and my buggy was, it didn't just stop and land upside down. It kept on tumbling all through the actual hangar. I just think that they did a wonderful job in talking about PBR and how it was going to bring that realistic look to everything. I, I get it now. There's some lighting glitches and stuff inside of it, of course. And we're going to go pay homage to the lamp. If you don't know the lore behind the lamp, you need to start reading up on it. There is a Wikipedia entry. Of course, PBR can't make a IKEA lamp look any better. It looks as good as it looks. All right, here's the workbench. This is where you're going to be able to mod your uh, weapons, overclock weapons in your engines and other systems and sometimes blow up. And of course, they touched up the elevator. No more falling through the elevator floor. No more driving your buggy onto the elevator. And what looks like a much better elevator, you have a door now with a bulkhead and glass. Here's your table. We're going to swap out a cannon. We're going to get rid of the useless CF-007 laser repeater, I think is what it's called, on the 300i trainer, which should be at the bottom of this list. These are all the ships I own. you got to scroll through the list of ships you own, and I've got a number of them. And get to the 300, and here we go. And then, of course, I'm going to put the mass driver on it because I want it to have the full loadout that the 325A has. Why? Well, I did a review of the 325A in the past, and I talked a lot about what I thought this ship was going to be able to do. This is a 300i, so it's not going to have the boosted shields. It's not going to have the added armor. If you remember, there's a distinctive difference between the 300i and the 300p in the weight class and that weight is mostly armor 
So after your shields go down, a 325A, which is coming in at, well, the new ship specs have them all at the same weight now, all a little bit heavier, so maybe that's not so big anymore. And it, the 325A has a Defender Force Wall, where the 300i has an all stop defender all stop just like the 315p which is the actual 300 series i have pbr has done this ship justice and some people don't like the white i do i think that it looks beautiful and i think that there's going to be different paint schemes and don't forget there are skins that we could buy and i'm sure there's going to be many more skins that we could buy and I'm hoping that there'll be a whole user area for skins that are created and that we can buy. That's the Omneski uh, laser cannon, which right now is pretty much death on a stick. It is it, it is the uh, best weapon in the game, in my opinion, at this point. Not only is it gimbaled, so it auto-tracks, but it's also killer. A couple of shots, you take out a scavenger. A few more shots, you take out a hunter. Um... It and the Mantis, which is on the ship over there, are awesome. What I'm looking at now is the cluster of three maneuvering thrusters, which I talked about in my review of the 325A. This ship has 12 maneuver, maneuvering jets for a lightweight and small fighter. It's relatively small. And uh, although they're TR-1, they... Uh, my, my assumption was that this was going to be a highly maneuverable fighter. And, well, I was correct at that. I was definitely made to see that this was a very maneuverable fighter. It is a tin can, though. And what I mean by that is, if you think of something like the P-51 Mustang from World War II, if you hit that thing just right, it just went down, right? The radiator was its uh, glass jaw. And in this one... I would say the glass jaw that I found is the tail end. You do not want to give your rear to any of the more advanced AI that you meet in the Vandal Swarm. Anything hunter and above, if you've got them on your tail, you better hit that nearest target button, turn to them, and start pumping some lead into them and launching one of those uh, Talon stalkers at them. On the other hand, that ship over there is built more like the Thunderbolt. You could riddle it with holes, take off a wing, take off a tail, and the thing is going to fly. Uh, the, the, the Hornet is a real pilot's, a real fighter pilot's dream to fly. A couple of things about it that when I'm looking at it today make me wonder just a little bit more. And the first thing are these Mantis cannons. They are... They rain death upon the enemy, and they are amazing. The two CF-007s on top are not. But I look at it, and we keep talking about immersion and what would be in real life. Something that heavy and that produces torque and would have the recoil that that has would never be on a gimbal that small. That is way too tiny. Nonetheless, this is a incredible spaceship by itself. It's just not one that I have mastered flying yet. It's, it takes a little bit more skill. You've got to be able to engage the decoupler or disengage the decoupler and the uh, G-limiter to push it to the edge of its flight model. Um, and when you do that, it, it is killer. I just have not been able to master it yet. The Aurora is pretty fun to fly also. I've taken it all the way up to level 9 and almost level 10. The Origin 300i, I've taken up past level 10 and almost to the end of level 11, but then crashed into the uh, terraforming device. This over here, that whatever you want to call it, that display, they shrunk it and probably made it much uh, more useful. But I was using it as a display panel to lay video on, on my, uh, for my some of the videos that I do and it's then I guess those videos are gonna have to be much smaller now the interior of the ship just looks awesome um, the cockpit on the other hand it is I think the cockpit in the 300 the 325 isn't done yet this one does look more done but it 
just the monotone and unfinished pieces of it lend you to think that yes this is definitely just a trainer essentially what arena commander is a virtual game inside of a virtual game right it's kind of like inception a world within a world be two layers deep at this point all right so we are launching the game and i don't think i wait too long here i just push right forward and get us right in Basically, this is the world that we're fighting in. It's called Broken Moon. It's kind of a small area, but you've got a couple of terraforming devices up here, which have these big beams of death that come out of them. Of course, they're life-giving beams terraforming the world below. You have lots of asteroids and debris around. Above the terraforming devices you have a cloudy black area and I have successfully on one or two occasions gotten one of these guys to follow me and fall into the beam or crash into an asteroid when I'm trying to weave myself in and out of them getting away from them it took me a long time to do very obvious things like learn how to use the Afterburner, which I mastered in Wing Commander 3. Alright, so... I think what I'm going to do here is try to show off the Amnesky laser cannons and how well they are doing their job. The maneuverability, the visibility of this fighter is awesome. You'll see just a couple of shots as I get in closer to this guy. And, well, not hitting him too well here, but it only takes a couple of shots, see that? It only takes a couple of shots in the first couple of rounds to take out a scavenger. As time goes on, even the scavengers get harder. The scavengers get better AI, the hunters get better AI, at least I feel like they do. When I'm suffering from two things by the time I get to level 11, the first thing is white knuckle flying, which means I am holding onto my joystick way too hard by the end because uh, there are some hairy moments when both of your wingmen have committed suicide, in other words, done nothing but shot at the air instead of the fighters in front of them. The AI for your wingmen definitely has to be improved a tiny bit. Not so much that they actually get all the kills, but more so that they don't just stand there and fly into each other, fly into you, a piece of debris or a floating asteroid. Alright, so as you see, the fighting is actually quite good. So the second thing that I suffer from is the joystick I use, the X-55 has a mode, or not a mode, has a twist to it and that will pretty much be yaw on a ship like this. And the yaw control, every time I'm I'm rolling or pitching, is enacting. I've been trying to add a big enough dead zone in it that I don't come out of a roll or come out of a pitch maneuver and then suddenly yaw off of the target that I'm trying to shoot at. So the intention of this video is is to give you just an idea of what to see in the game, but also talk about a little bit talk a little bit about combat tactics. There's a lot of just flying in circles in this game and that's because I it's new and I haven't figured out AI, but I figured out a couple of maneuvers that they do. Like I think it was the Drothy in uh the Wing Commander series, that whenever they came towards you, they would do a maneuver where they would pitch up and pull over and speed away. It was a pitch up, stop in midair, and then move away. The scavengers do that here. As they're pitching up or turning, they stop. You're still moving forward, see? And you hit them because they have not started moving in the other direction. So when you're flying and you see a scavenger or a hunter, which also does that maneuver sometimes, doing that, 
you've got to pull back on the throttle real fast. Otherwise, in later portions of the game, when you have almost no none of your shields left, you're going to blow up. You're going to go right into it and blow up. I kind of get used to doing this by the end of the night last night. I streamed for a few hours. And I would say kind of because the last death I had last night was due to that maneuver on level 11 with this particular ship. It's hard. I had um, almost hour and 15 minute um, all the way through level 9 fight with the Aurora. The Aurora is nimble. It, it's essentially don't let it stand still because you're going to get blown out of the sky, but it's pretty nimble. Um, it's two lasers are worthless. Well, they're not worthless. They actually do a pretty good job, so I shouldn't say. I think they're M3As or M4As, I can't remember. I, I will tell you this though, um, I can see the Aurora LN with its bigger power plant, so thus being able to fire more before the engine, de not the engine, the laser depletes its capacitor. Look how gorgeous this is. Look at the beauty of that, that ship. Contact. Just breathtaking what they brought to us. Initiated. But the Aurora itself, the LN with the Scan. bigger Initiated. power plant, the four um, weapons mounts, and the missile mount, I think that's going to be much more formidable. Um, obvious, right? Since the MR is the base model. And the better shields on that unit also, I believe. You can't make an MR an LN because it doesn't have the ability to tie in the bigger power plant or the end the four weapons. I think you could do a bigger power plant, but only two weapons. All right. Meaning two of the laser weapons. All of the Auroras have the spot for the missiles on top of the ship. So the visibility is what really has me in this ship. It's much more visibility than something, say, like a Hornet. But a Hornet is made for military, so it's really supposed to be there to take a beating, right? And so the canopy that's in the Hornet is really designed to take that beating. The Hornet reminds me not of like the F-18 Hornet from today's world, and I said that before, but in thinking about it now, it's kind of a cross between the Hornet of today, but also the Phantom. Um, that tandem cockpit one that I have, the uh, F-7CM, definitely reminds me of a Phantom. That cockpit layout and everything, the way the canopy is, instead of being curved, being square, but it has that look and feel to it. And it, and it kind of has that elegant look to it, but still flying brick feel to it. So missiles in this game are much more accurate than they were in the testing that they were doing. And I can tell you this, they are definitely, they, they have some realism to them because you can spoof a missile by outmaneuvering it, but you're in space and in, let's be honest, you're not going to be able to pull the 16 G's and live that a missile can to get off its tail. But you could pull it around a, you know, piece of hardware. Ooh. We just got owned. See that? Wing came off. Damage model is awesome. And obviously, thrusters have to work to keep you moving forward. They have to. And that means your thrusters are always firing now, which is going to reduce your maneuverability. And there is the first death I have in this match, which is a death via ramming. I didn't get out of that guy's way. He was just sitting there. I think he did that maneuver, and I didn't pick up on it. So you get three spawns, I believe it is. We're in now. And we come back on a new ship after you respawn. Weapons reloaded. Um, only thing that doesn't get fixed when you come back is going to be the uh, wingmen. Your wingmen will not return if you die. 
I am doing something stupid here, trying to shoot at long range. Maybe it's not so stupid, I don't know. Um, but these Omniskis are going to pack a wallop if I can get in closer, right? So I want to actually get this ship closer to that guy before I open up on him, because if I can get four bursts into a scavenger, you see pieces of him come off, that's just awesome. I'm going to be able to kill him. You also notice that I almost never use the mass driver. I, I think the mass driver is probably for taking out bigger, um, bigger targets. Say a freelancer, constellation, caterpillar, cutlass. One of the multiplayer ships because although I feel like it's on a gimbal mount because it does retract and extend from the bay that it is in under the nose. At least I believe it does. I don't find that it tracks as well as the laser cannons on the wingtips. But you would think that it's a better a better weapon for killing things because it's right there on your nose, right? So, I'm just showing you the different views. We've been able to stave off some unwanted people here. All right, we're going in again. Let's go. All righty, let's go and fire. Okay, so we are taking this guy apart, and I'm just trying to let you see what I see. When parts of my ship come apart, you know, when pieces of my ship fly off, it becomes very difficult for me to maneuver and keep my ship going in one direction, okay? When you're down to just seeing the cockpit area of the scythe flying around, it is maneuverable and it can kick your rear end. And that's something that I find quite unusual. It, I, I think that when you're taking pieces of these fighters apart, the scythe, that it should have the same, you know, detriments that you face when you have parts of your ship come off. Maybe that's what's going on. I haven't flown one of these ships to know how important the wing and everything else is. But you've got to believe that the, you know, for a, a system that's asymmetrical like the Scythe, that its thrusters are built to be able to handle the offset weight of this oh god that missile took about uh, offset weight of its airframe right or I guess you call it a space frame because when when you're flying in space if you don't have everything perfectly symmetrical you're gonna push the object into some kind of other trajectory into a curve to the right curve to the left or just spinning off in circles so the thrusters have to counter that asymmetrical design take off a wing, they have to compensate again, right? Which means they don't have all of the power necessary to actually turn and maneuver. But that doesn't seem to be what's happening here. Unless these things are just ultra maneuverable and come down to being less godlike, which I don't find that they're godlike in other ways after they start coming apart. And I went after the piece for a second there. Did you see that? So 15 waves, every three waves, you face a elite. And those elites have names. Um, you have Contact. Prince, the Priest, Bloodhound, and I don't know what the last two are yet because I haven't gotten that far up. Their elites are actually um, individually named um, entities, Vanduul. The cannon fodder you see, so far I've seen scavengers, hunters, and alphas. Okay? Scavengers being, you know, they're, form they're not so bad. They attack in packs and they like to ram you a lot, but that's their tactic, right? Hunters fire at you from a distance. They're a little bit more maneuverable. They stay on your tail. They're a little bit better. And then you have your alphas, which are pretty much as good as the first elite that you face. And 
they are going to put up a fight. If you're in a fight with an elite, a couple of hunters and a couple of alphas and no scavengers, you're going to have, you're going to have to push your, your spacecraft to the edge of its flight model to win that one. And hope that none of your systems, especially your cooling system, have been damaged. Because if your cooling system is damaged, then you're not uh, able to fire your weapons as much, which means you probably won't take down shields. That's pretty difficult. I know I'm talking randomly here. I'm trying to talk about what's going on. I uh, find that missiles, I try to save them for the elites, but... Last night I found that once you get to the priest, he spoofs your missiles quite a bit. So when you start fighting the priest, see what I mean? That was that stop spin maneuver and I just crashed right into him. Um, when you get to the priest and you get to Bloodhound, you use your missiles on the fodder around him to take them out so you can focus on him without other people taking out your tail. That's what I've been doing, and that's how I've been getting up in level. The only reason I think that I'm not doing better is because of the other things I was talking about. My difficulty mastering the the X-55, and the first thing that I have to do is put the lighter spring on it. Right now it's got a very choppy feel. And the second thing I have to do is just keep increasing the dead zone a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, usable. So, you're getting to see a lot of the, a lot of the gameplay here, and this is, of course, just the Vandal Swarm. We're going to have many more game modes that are going to be available to us in the future, including one in the future that will be multiplayer ship-based ones. The one that I'm looking forward to is, say you're in a Cutlass or a Constellation, and you're flying against other ships. Maybe there's a capture of the station. Maybe there's a caption, capture of the derelict ship. You can fly in with your Connie. Have somebody in each, you know, have one of your friends in each one of the turrets. Have somebody in the P-52. You can then have a group of Marines in the back that are real people. And you can take out the fighters and defenses around the station land your troops in the station which are your people who are then going to fight other people that are on that station and then take to the skies and your connie and the p-52 and the two turrets that you have and anybody else that's flying in your group and try to defend the outside of the station as your boarding team tries to take the inside of the station I am all for where this game is going. In fact, I'm hoping that when they talk about esports, and they have, right? That they get some kind of in-game system where you can watch. Maybe have it that you're sitting in a bar or sitting in an area and that's on a big screen in front of you. And that it is being announced on. That we get somebody that's got personality, like Eric. No. Somebody that's got a good knack for being able to color commentate and tell us about the ooh took off a wing there um, tell us about the way that the match might be going I think arena commander is going to be a very successful part of star citizen in the future until then this is kind of giving us three things to do the first thing is we get something that makes us happy for a while that's part of the game right we get to actually go and fly some of the ships that we own the second thing is we get to alpha test beta test help balance the weapons engines fighters themselves the maps that we're playing in right so this is us helping to get this done and the third thing is to learn basic space combat tactics right because in the past we didn't have all of these physics going on in a space game you do an elite and you did an elite 2 I believe it was and above 
But in most of these space games like Freelancer and Star Lancer, you could do a decoupled slide and a couple of other maneuvers. But in this one, real Newtonian physics like that, you know, that ship is still moving. We just have more relative velocity and, you know, it just comes right at you. And it takes a few seconds to actually change your direction in space. There are times that when I was flying this, I was actually somehow, I had added lateral thrust and up and down thrust, and I was actually thrusting down really fast. <clears throat> and it actually helped a lot in getting away from the swarm of Anduls that were on me at the end of the match after this one. So I think CIG did a great job with this and we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we close out. We only have a few minutes left of this particular match. This is version one. I've played Elite Dangerous's initial combat piece of the of their new game. Okay, Elite Dangerous. So Frontier Group's Elite Dangerous and David Braven did a great job with that one. The visuals here are amazing, even though there isn't a lot of anti-aliasing going on and there still has to be a lot more optimization. But the visuals are top. They are amazing. As a first pass giving to the community to help make this thing better, I think they did a good job. There's some unbalancing, you know, disparity between the ships at this point but mainly because we don't know how to use all the ships and weapons at this point. The Hornet, I believe, is going to really rely on being decoupled and having the G limiter off at times, and that's going to be something that we're going to need to have access to putting onto our HOTA systems. As a first pass, this is an amazing ship. I'd like a more varied... Um, number of things that Pitching Betty says, and I know that that's going to come over time. I'd like a little bit more communication so I could tell my uh, my wingman what to do, so I can tell one to, you know, maybe I could tell them to take on the scavengers while I'm going after the big guy, right? Or maybe I could put two of them on the big guy to distract them as I take out all the cannon fodder. So that's something I wish I could I could see. But Everything from the way the shields work, to the damage models, to what happens to your ship as it is damaged. Um, I, I'm highly impressed. I'm highly impressed. The biggest sleeper in the whole hangar patch, the, big, the biggest thing, the biggest change, is the Freelancer. And probably because that ship is about ready to be released with all of its variants, commercial, and brochure. And... The version that's in my hangar is just incredible. And like I said, 1950s style RV is what I see on the outside with that polished aluminum. And the inside of that ship is just amazing. Reminds me of a 1950s or 60s uh, transport, like a C-123 provider, Globemaster. Um, just, just awesome. So they did a lot of work on this. Remember, it wasn't just Arena Commander, it was the whole hangar also in PBR of all your ships. Go walk through it and make sure every day that you're done, you walk upstairs and see the additions, the changes to your hangars. Um, deluxe hangar, I haven't been through the standard hangar or the business hangar yet. I gotta go run through those. But the deluxe hangar looks amazing. And the fish tank, oh my lord, PBR fish tank. It's just gorgeous. And I'm not, you know, big on saying, you know, let's just look at the fish tank all the time. But, you know, when they're building things and they're able to have that fidelity in something like a fish tank, which is water, I'm pretty impressed. So what am I going to be doing for the future in this game is just trying to learn how to fly the three ships that are in it. Pray for version 0.9, pray for version point, you know, 1.0 get into the multiplayer, start making my name there. But what I'm longing for is to grab my Avenger and get into this game and start fighting. That's the biggie. Multiplayer ships I know are version 2. So that's a ways away. 
I can't wait for that to happen, but I'm looking for the other single seat ships to be in here. And the Avenger is the biggest one that I'm looking forward to. And of course the Aurora LN and the imminent release, I'm praying, I don't know anything that you guys don't know. Um, the uh, Mustang, those are the two things I want to see here. That's about all I have. I'm about ready to die, so everybody take a little gander at the rest of this video. And don't forget to go back to my last video and uh, help out Julie and Rocious with their uh, plight against Nash. Thank you very much. Ship is adrift. 